You're on the couch, tripping with Dr. P. What's up, what's up, what's up? Uh, go, what's going on, everybody? I'm out here. Uh, oof, it's been a great... First of all, I want to start by saying, happy Mother's Day. Yeah, it's Mother's Day. It's a big, it's a big thing. It's a big thing. Mother's Day, I'm here with my cousin, Kenny. He came. I went to, for a Mother's Day. I went down south to visit my mother. <laughs> I, mean, what, is that, I don't know what's more appropriate than going to, to visit your mom on Mother's Day. Uh, if, if somebody right now, uh, please make sure that if you get a chance, you go visit your mom. I know, you know, it's funny how sometimes everything has become so much more important than our family. And even our friends, really. And so I think sometimes it's important to kind of get back to, to making sure you make space for the ones who you love, you know? And, and here's the thing that I learned from this little trip, which is pretty cool. Um, it's not just for them, it's for you. It, it really renews your energy to be back by the people that you love. We did a show all week last week and I didn't get a chance to finish. I'm gonna finish and we did a show on loneliness. That was a good topic, but we're talking about a lot. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I think has kind of allowed for this kind of loneliness to be the epidemic that it is, is family and friends have kind of gotten really consumed into their own worlds. And every minute of our day can be consumed with, you know, internet, with, you know, digital reality, whatever it is, every minute is possibly to be consumed. And so it makes sense when we, ha we have to kind of, in some ways, demand we make space for the things that really matter. Yeah, a family is one of them for sure. And if you, so in some ways we create the loneliness and then we suffer from it, right? We choose to be like putting the things and the material, all these other things in front of people and then we're lonely. And, and here's one of the things I think that helps the most is the notion of connectedness that's not real, but it's kind of artificial through social media. It makes you think you're connected. Well, even the phones. I mean, texting has now replaced conversations for the most part. I mean, I don't know. It's important that you text. And yeah, you can do it at your leisure. I get it. I text all the time. But it still takes away from the conversation, the connection that a conversation feels like. So anyway, so I'm here having a conversation with my buddy. Not my buddy. My, we grew up together in the South. Oh, man. We used to go spend summers down with my cousin. Uh, it was... It was crazy. We, we were, it was, how old were we down here? I mean, what, like fifth grade, I know we came down. We used to come down on the summers. So when I come down south, I, I'd be like this city boy who really couldn't deal with this like country. We were down here before there was indoor plumbing. Oh, yeah. Yo, we, it, was, it was an outhouse. Pine Ridge. Pine Ridge. Down, it was an outhouse. So every, tell, if I'm lying, tell me I'm lying. Tell, the, the, the only you can verify this story. They used to um, expect that you'd go out into the outhouse. There were spiders. Yeah. Maggots, snakes. snakes, all sorts of shit in the in the in the outhouse, and they want you to go out in at night and go poop and shit out in the outhouse. I couldn't do it. With somebody with a flashlight. I couldn't do it with, with the tissue, like with the little. Oh my god, bro! Maggots in the thing. Maggots. I'm a city guy. Maggots. Oh my god. So I was so scared as a little kid. I remember being in fourth grade, super scared of the outhouse, and I would just shit myself. <laughs> I would just shit myself. I was like, yo, and they acted like I wasn't body trained. So I would get beaten as if like I needed to learn to not shit myself. My grandmother, my, was our grandmother tough? Yeah, tough one of the comments. Yeah. <laughs> tough. Still, yeah, still, our grandmother, our grandmother was the old school, like, you know what I mean? She'd make like, we got, me and Kenny grew up with getting our own switches. Like you go get your own switch up a tree to get beat with. And if you <laughs> bought the wrong switch, there was one waiting for you. Yeah. It was. She braided. She two together. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. So we got beat. We we were a generation that got beat. I mean, I don't know. Was it was was beating your kids? Is that an all bad thing? No, it's not all bad. What do you think? <clears throat> it's not all bad, man. Punishment is not always good, not always bad, but it teaches some discipline. Okay. You know, it does put some fear in your ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, gotta put, you gotta put a little fear. Yeah, a little, it puts a little bit of, you know, so they say like respect is like fear and love yeah. mixed together, yeah. but you gotta have a little fear in there. You gotta, like, yeah, right? Like, you, yeah, you, you can't just love your dad just to respect him. You gotta kind of fear him a little bit to be like, yeah, 
you whatever you say. When he walks in the room, your butt cheeks get tight. <laughs> no, that's you. See, that's abuse. That's an abuse reaction. That's a. They call that a trauma reaction right there. Hold on for a second. Yeah, we're going to pop a bubble. What's going on? Who, me? Yeah, he's in the building. Dr. P, um, do you ever touch on the subject of a narcissist, MPD? Yes, yes. Narcissist. Oh, my gosh. What a great topic, man. Narcissistic personality disorder. It's, it's, it's so overused nowadays and i talk about it a little bit just because i want to kind of bring a real understanding of what that diagnosis means but more importantly like it's being used kind of in this like i gotta say a little bit of a part of the feminist narrative in order to pathologize men and let me tell you there are female narcissists be very clear this is not something that's gender you know determined at all Narcissism is a fucked up thing. And, and here's some major pieces. And here's a way to think about narcissism in a very simple way. The world is made of givers and takers. Narcissists are master takers. They're master takers. They don't have the empathy. That's the key component to narcissism. They don't have the empathy to care about what's going on for the other person. All it is is about them. And if they feign kindness, it's really manipulative in its intention. That's point criteria number two. So I've given you two major criteria. Everybody gets tripped up on the criteria that narcissism is about uh, grandiosity. The belief that one has, you know, uh, is exceptional. That arrogance, right? Believing you're exceptional when you're not. There's a lot. There's not. That's not an all bad thing. That's probably the least of the problems. Thinking that you're exceptional when you're not, yeah, maybe it'll make to false arrogance, but most out of nine times out of 10, it makes you reach for the stars. And the worst that you do is get off the ground. But sometimes if you reach for a cloud, you don't even get off the ground. So narcissism, that might be the grandiosity, might be the best part. If you think about it, most people, what, think about how narcissistic, according to, or I should say grandiose, not narcissistic, but how grandiose um, you must be to run for president. I can, I can lead, me can lead the whole world. Come on, that, that demands a certain level of belief about what's capable for you. So it's a very tricky thing because sometimes having those high aspirations, that belief in yourself as outstanding, is the most important belief you can have to your self-esteem. So don't trip up on that. Here is what makes a narcissist. The lack of empathy and the manipulation. Look it up, folks. Yeah, but anytime you guys want to talk, ask a question, you got anything you're thinking about, you shoot my way, I'll tell you what I think. I tried to move away from diagnoses anyway, and people are using it in a very popular way anytime a person puts themselves above, other, above others. This notion of gaslighting, oh man, what a huge narcissistic piece. That's the nature of the manipulation. Oftentimes, that's one form that manipulation can happen, is that they make, they make the person think that there's something wrong with them. Their inability to self-reflect, to take ownership. See, the thing about narcissism that folks don't know, narcissism, although it presents extraordinarily powerful usually uh you know outgoing or gregarious beings but really what's going on is it's, it's deep compensation for it a, a very fragile ego and sense of self a very damaged deeply damaged self-esteem and the reason why they in part of why they uh had lack empathy is they feel traumatized about no one actually loving them and not really having real self-worth narcissism is a fascinating fascinating uh, area to, to think about personality from. So anyway, we're talking about uh, down south. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm here with my cousin, hanging out in down south. Where, where this is? Uh, what is this? Lancaster? Lancaster, Lancaster South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. the house is beautiful. My mom's house. Is she? They like. Yeah. This nice. is where. Yeah, I can see how people retire down here. Oh yeah. Do you see a lot of people transporting down here nowadays? Like, are there a lot more people moving? California, New Jersey, New York, all of them. Really? Yeah. Just really moving From their here, way. All the way to Charlotte. Wow. Yeah. 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 So the only thing that I've always kind of struggled with. Oh, here's my mom. She's on to my mom. Everybody say, Mom, I got you on the podcast. Say hi, Mom. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. Where, who's on the podcast? Oh, Who is everybody's this? Everybody's out here listening. This is your oh, in the Dr. world? Yeah, this yeah. is the world? The world is listening. Hi, you know what? I love my son. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. And let me tell you, he came. He gave me the biggest surprise. He told me there was a package outside and it ended up being him. Yeah, yeah. That was oh, good. That oh was my good. God. So I told my mom, I said, Mom, Mom, I come in the house uh, hey it's good to see you so I, I come he comes in the house and uh so I, I call her i call her up i get here like 11 30 drove 12 13 hours to get here i get there about 11 30 at night and i call my mother i said mom mom did, did you get the package 
She goes, what package? I said, uh, they, they, they just left it on the stairs. You got to go out and check it out. Check out the house. She goes, no, I didn't see any package. I said, go outside. My stair. It's there. She goes out and she doesn't see it. She's like on, like she looks through the window instead of opening the door. She's like, like, you know, give me the old nervous, you know, look at the door. She cracks. I'm like, damn, she messed it up. <laughs> so I was like, no, my, you got it. So she hears my car open up. She's like, oh, I think the truck is opening up now. It was me. She, she, oh man, she lost it. So it was, it was dope. So that was a good surprise. Um, it, it's good to be down here visiting with my cousin. They got a new house. I haven't seen my mom, uh, my mom's new home since she's moved. So it's just been, uh, been a great, great weekend. I uh, cooked breakfast for my, uh, for, for the family today. Uh, so my mother didn't have to. That was, <laughs> right? That's like a, that's like a good thing. Really? Now you're a guy, let's, let's talk about you for a second. Now you're a guy, I was uh, teasing you. I met your wife. You guys have been married 17 years. 17. Yeah, man, hold this for a second. So 17 years, that's crazy, man. That's fucking yep, 17 nuts. years. It, it, it's, a lot of people can't make it three, like the first year, three years of marriage are like it's, rocking. It always said, if you can make it to five, you're good. Yo, for real. Five. For real. Yeah. For real. Yeah. Now, you know, so 17 years of marriage, you got three kids, three beautiful kids. boys. Yeah. What's your philosophy in raising, in raising young men? Like, what's your philosophy? To live by example. Okay. You know, they they watch everything you do, your moves, yeah. the way you carry yourself. Yeah. You know uh, what you say. Right. You know, right. so like I said, you 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 are the model that that you set before your your, your family yeah. each and every day. Yeah. So they if they watch you, do so what you're what supposed you to do. Show them what is what are some of the things in your modeling that you think about, like like explicitly make sure I show them treating their mother right, yeah. talking to talking to women in a certain like yeah. what what are some of the things you try to show them? Uh, just respect, basically. Yeah. You know, yeah. I always respect people that that's above you. Yeah. Right, right. You know, right. you also, I mean, you, you're big. You're my. You're, I mean, you. When we were kids, you were a fucking twig. Yeah. And now you're yeah. like a bodybuilder. Oh yeah. You're like fucking huge. Yeah. And so, do you also show, are you telling them something about like work ethic when you work out? Discipline, like, is this a thing? Yeah, discipline is always the key. Uh, that that's not only in, in, in physical fitness, but in life. Yeah. Uh, you always have to any, anything you put your you can put your mind to, man. That you know that comes to discipline. Let me ask you, yep. what, what do you think is the, what makes you be as disciplined you, with, as you are with your body? Uh, a goal. I, I, have, I have a way I want to look. So I set, I set goals. Wait, but it, it's got to be like hugely important. Yeah. You said you like have a vision for your body. Yeah. Why is it that like if you make that really important to you? Or? Really important. It becomes a habit. Okay. You know, I, if, if, you know, even, even I work hard, but. You know, even through that, even the, the, no matter how many hours I work, I always go straight to the gym and work. Always. Yeah. You know? And I hear the way you talk about the gym. Yeah. It's like a fight for you. Like you oh, talk yeah. about the weights like they're your enemy. Oh, yeah. Is that how you do it? Like, seriously? Like, yeah, kind of like I take it out. You know, of course, you know, you deal with you deal with things in life on the job or people. But, you know, you can't take it to that next level yeah. with them. You know, you got to keep professional yeah. at all times. Yeah. So, you know, but the gym for me is also to transform my body, but it's also an outlet, you know, with me. Yeah. So anything I do, I put it on the weights. Yeah. Okay. You know. Okay. And, and yeah, the tension, whatever it is. Yeah. 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 But it shows. You were, you were saying to me, which is why I actually wanted to start talking on the podcast a little bit because I just love what you said. You were talking about the body, but you were saying that there's a mind-body relationship. Oh yeah, it is. But what, what, what do you like? What do you mean by that? Uh, uh, so many people they want they set a goal for themselves and how they want to look, but they don't understand it starts mentally. If, if, if I want to transform my body and I, I don't feel good about how I look in the mirror, it starts, everything starts with your, with your, meet your mind. Your so, so can you like yourself before you transfer your transition? Like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, would you look in the mirror? What do you mean? Uh, as far as a person, even, even, even bodybuilders, they have flaws and, and, and you know, they look at themselves and feel like they can be better okay. or someone judging them yeah. would say well you know you need to it's not enough here, it's not enough here or there you get you're lacking in different areas so you fight certain areas because i hear a I lot do. of guys do that oh yeah they look yeah. at a specific yeah. part of their body and they're like let me attack this yeah and then they get serious and depressed in that way oh yeah i'm about to start to attack the arm bro yeah so my goal is to get a tattoo yeah so i want to be able to get a tattoo and my thinking is if i get a tattoo on an arm and every like 10 pounds i lose or something like that get another tattoo add to it it like will motivate me to keep grinding yeah you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. and then you, 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 when you start, like the tattoo makes you look at and want to show your body. Oh yeah. It you does. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out, I think these mind hacks are important. Like you said, set a vision yeah. for what you want. 
Yo, you know I can still fucking slam you, right? <laughs> no, I mean, hold on, bro. Hold on. Hey, I came a long way. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I came a long way. Hold on. Listen, just because you're like way <laughs> yeah. bigger than me yeah. and like your arms are like twice my size right oh, now, yeah. don't let that think I'm not the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, I got to talk to my cousin like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can't trust that he might, is he's looking pretty huge over here. Yeah. Side eye me a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yo, man, I'm proud of your family, man. They're oh, beautiful. I appreciate it. Thank They're you. They're beautiful, man. Yeah. Yeah, man, Ken, you've done a you've done a tremendous job. You now you come from a uh, type of guy. You come from a guy. Your dad is is, is an work. example for you. Yeah, hard work. Yeah. yeah, always he always did what he did for his family. Provide. Right. Right. It wasn't it wasn't. We didn't always have the best, but we had enough. We had what we needed. Gotcha. I, I would say that. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Always had what we needed. So do you remember? Do you remember like? Uh, so do you remember like the the the, the feeling of shit being super tight? Remember oh, yeah. how poor we were? Bro? Oh yeah, yeah. Like your uncle, your my uncle Pete, your dad yeah. would take me to go get a bag of Doritos and a and a soda. Oh, yeah. Bro, that was like the biggest gift. That was the world. It was the world. <laughs> when he took us fishing, yeah. it was like yeah. it was and the funny thing is people people think that when you're poor it's so bad. The reality is when you're poor, you appreciate shit way differently. Oh yeah. Going yeah. fishing, that yeah. was like fucking great adventures. It was yeah. like the best shit. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. You know what I mean? Little shit like that, man. But Times that's, have changed. Man. Yeah, that, that's memories that will that will carry on for a lifetime. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's memories that you teach to your kids. Yeah, I can know? literally yeah. see the lake your dad would take us to. Oh, like, yeah. I can see the little area. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can see the little path to get there. Like, that's a memory in my... It was a little, little kid. Yeah, and now, now what he's doing now, he want, he want to do it with Michael and my sons. Yeah, it doesn't, he, he wants to take him out there. Yeah, he wants. He yeah, wants to take him out. Is tripping because yeah. it's like snakes. All oh that yeah. Shit yeah. Out there. <laughs> the deep country. Oh yeah. Yo, I used to yeah. go down here. I used to spend. I used to spend my whole summers down here. Uh, so I'd be down here for like two months, or you know, because in, in the inner city, like they don't want you. You know, your parents. If you're gonna, if you, if they're at work all day and you're out, you get caught up in the streets. Yeah. Nobody's to watch you. They can't afford daycare. So off for a whole summer, two months, mm -hmm. they sending you down south back in the day. It was standard, oh, yeah. standard. Yeah. Yeah. But in some ways, you know, I hated it because I was like, I got to go down south, and it's like, you know, the country out this month. We just sit out on the porch, burn up. We, but I loved it because we would be connected. Oh, yeah. You were like my, me and you were like kids together. Oh yeah. Like it's fucking crazy. Yeah. Like we grew up running around, lat. Like this was like my best friend. A lot of memories. Yeah, so, yeah. This is like my best memories. friend over the summer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but wow. it's my cousin. Yeah. Uh, it was great. But, yeah, they, they used to. Uh, oh man, man. So you know they had the outhouse. That's a fucking good story. Pump yeah. it with the with the pump. God. The jugs. Yo, how about how about how about when there's like a, they put a little bowl in the kitchen sometimes at night, so like it's like it, so that way you could use the little. It was like a little a tub, like a little metal steel pot, or whatever yeah. the fuck it was. Yeah. You could use that shot. I'm so thankful to use that <laughs> shit. Like, thank you. I made it to the dark. I yeah. my poop to the yeah. dark. Yeah. It's like a poop in the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yo, life was simple, man. Penny candy was the standard. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. I don't. I have, I have missing teeth because of fucking penny candy, bro. <laughs> yeah, we, used, we used to eat bags of it. Yo, nowadays and yeah. shit, uh, big blows. <laughs> a dollar, a dollar gets you a lot. A dollar gets you a dream. Butterscotch, yeah, the yeah, mint, South Oh yeah. uh, man, we got a couple of bubbles. Let's pop. What's going on? Happy Mother's Day, you guys. So good to hear you. So good to see you out here in the stereo. In the stereo, I'm with my cousin. I came down to visit my mom down south, so I surprised her. So it's been a good little visit. So we just talking and kind of going down. He was talking to me about body of mind. My cousin's like a bodybuilder. The guy's fucking huge, huge, jacked. And so I wanted to like, uh, you know, just you know, I'm always working on my body, trying to get myself together. It's like my biggest struggle, my body. You know what I mean? And so he was telling when he told me this thing, and I thought it was so good. He said. He said, the change in your body starts with the change in your mind. I, I, as soon as he said that, I was like, all right, I'm getting my podcast out. Let's go. We gotta, I'm going to get this guy. I want to hear you. I want you to say this to everybody. Let him know. Because I think it's brilliant. The change in your body starts with the change in your mind. And if your body's not where you want it to be, it's reflective of something. I'd love to hear that from somebody who's really in shape. Now, I mean, of course, that's in line with my, you know, my philosophy as a psychologist. But to hear it from somebody who's actually doing it with their body. When people are successful, success leaves clues. 
So you look at the people who are successful and you say, what the fuck are you doing? What are you thinking? If you, if he's got, he's got the arms I want. This one. And when I come, when I get my arms, I'm going to fucking come down here and slam you. I just want to let you, <laughs> I just want I got a threat. He's bigger than me now. I got to keep him sight. See, mentally, I got to keep him under a leash. You know what I mean? I got I to lock him down because you know what I mean? He's a lot bigger than me nowadays. I was always the big one. You know what I mean? He was just tall and thin. Here we go. Let me pop. No, you know, you know what I noticed though about uh, uh, narcissists is that when, like, when it comes to text, they keep it to a minimum, a very small minimum, right? And but it's also like each comment is there's like three comments that they make, three three different ones. It's like first they bring you in, and then they'll they'll say something that'll get you confused, and then the third comment will be something like uh, like complimenting you on something, but at the same time putting you down. That's what I noticed. <laughs> I like they keep that to a minimum. Now, if like if I keep it to a minimum, oh man, forget it. They'll write a whole paragraph. Who me? It's weird so how they act. Yo, who me? You're good, bro. I like how you're thinking. <laughs> it's like they give you a backhanded comment that makes you doubt yourself. Like, oh, nice clothes. <laughs> you're like, oh shit. The niggas take that and get that to me. What happened there? Hold on. Dr. P, hello to everyone in the panel. Yeah, uh, the South. Uh, yeah, the South is beautiful. A lot of people from up north, because I am from yeah. the South, are moving back down this way. It's been like that for years and years. So a lot of people retire and a lot of people move down for, um, you know, um, I wouldn't say so much um, the education, but um, it could be um, safety reasons. Um, better you know prices on homes and oh, things like that so yeah uh, the south is yeah. what it is it may be you know not as fast paced as new york and places like that but yeah, yeah. so um i hope you enjoyed <laughs> your summers in the south growing up there's nothing wrong with the south yeah all right peace um dr pete i hope you are having an amazing day and again hello to everyone in the chat thank you so much for coming in the show just she sounds she sounds like she's like southern syrup she sounds like she's just that, that maple. <laughs> yeah that good, that good maple syrup oh the sweet stuff yeah soulful thank you so much for coming into the show i gotta tell you uh yeah and southern uh people in general i don't care what they say they're nicer yo than the north people <laughs> yo in new york and new jersey if you say hi to somebody they're looking at you sideways because you, you remember years ago when i just come up i always throw my hand right up. you say you gotta you gotta stop that. yeah you gotta stop they can't I, we can't I wave at everybody myself. yeah no man what are you so, doing you it was standard for you you basically told me to keep my hands in my pocket so i won't man <laughs> <laughs> yo you're trying to wave everybody down i'm like no bro that's not how it works up here bro yeah man so uh yeah the southern nice people lady was in the and the thing is right so all right so the thing is the reason why some people don't come down uh, to this way is because it's hard to get jobs that are good good paying jobs are very difficult and i was hearing you you were talking and there's another reason why i wanted to kind of talk a little bit you were talking about doing your own thing and kind of starting your own business what, what are you thinking about doing uh basically this what, what I, my whole goal and dream is to have my own facility uh where actually working out your body and your mind as well. So really you getting everything all in one, yeah. you know, yeah. cause like I said before, everything starts with your mind. You can want the perfect body, but your mind's not right. You know, it's not fully developed as, as I would say. So now you're a spiritual guy, yeah. right? Like you, you're like, you raised in the church. Yeah. Is that right? Oh, so yeah. what you were saying that a part of what you, the kind of mind or the conscious, you're really thinking about counseling a person spiritually. Spiritually, yes. Yeah. Like, what, what do you mean? Like, tell, tell people what you're thinking. Uh, for spiritually, uh, kind of what, where, what do you stand with, with God? Right. You know, what, what, are, what are your beliefs? Right. You know, like, I think that's all. It all starts there. Now, you said people. You were talking about the kingdom. Yeah. You were saying people were like really connected. What were your, what were your thoughts about that? Uh, well, as far as kingdom, you know that that's what we we've been studying on for years. Uh, so many people, if when you start your own business, you want to cater to your own race. But kingdom as a whole is for everyone. Right. You know, it's all different nationalities all over the world. Right. Right. You know. Right. And you feel that there's a much more sense of connectedness. Yes. Yeah. 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 Do you think these differences are, are significant under God's eyes that we make significant? You think like race, you think like, you know, God's worrying about race? No. 
I don't I don't think he does. You don't think so? Yeah, I, I kind of feel like it's so I, kind of ironic how people call themselves Christian yeah. and think so divisively. Yeah. It just doesn't seem like it makes sense to me. That that <clears throat> for what I've seen there's always there's always division. You know, kingdom as a whole it, it, everybody's together. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I've been more recently and I talk about it all the time in my shows but I, I've been studying ominism. And it's been my philosophy lately. Um, I used to be, I was, you know, we grew up Baptist. Yeah. I was born Catholic, yeah. you know, baptized Catholic. And then I became, I grew up in the church now. Here we go to the church every every weekend. Oh, yeah. Well, yo, yeah. Wait, what was, remember the, remember the revivals? Yeah. Mount, remember, yeah remember the, Mount Zion. Mount Zion. <laughs> be in the choir. Yeah. God is real. <laughs> I know. I know. Because I can feel it down in my soul. God is real. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. Because I can feel it down in my soul. No matter, no matter what That's the it. price may be, he's able, he's able to make it for me. Yeah, yeah, down, yeah. down to my last time. He said, he stepped right in our town. And he's all that I need. God is real. Yeah. And he's all that I need. That Remember that? Song. Yeah, we were sitting there. God is real. And he's all that. And then the choir started killing it. Yeah. Killing it. That song lasts for two hours. For two hours. God <laughs> is real. I know. I know, right? Like it'd be like a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. We were in a church church. We were in a church when the pastor, Pastor Jackson, right? When it was what was Reverend, what was his what was Reverend, name? Reverend Stinson. 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 Wow. Lord, remember when he hit it with that? Yo, he was like, when they did that on Eddie Murphy, remember when they did that in Coming to America and they like pretended? I was like, that's Reverend Stinson. Like 100 percent a yeah. oh, lord uh -huh. one day uh -huh. i went down uh -huh. right was that and everybody in the, the choir repeat yo yeah. was that real that's that's full of baptist full baptist full yo we grew up in the south south baptist baptist like church oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean it was like and it was grandma like remember remember mom like with the give out the mints yeah. yo that's an iconic like that's an iconic symbol of the black woman grandmother giving out mints in church we line, live that. Line everybody up. Why, yo, get your men. Yeah. Why, you want to have your breast right for a yeah. Sunday? That was the best part. Oh, yeah. It was a little reward. <laughs> You're right. You're right about yo, that. am I wrong? Come You're on. Right. And as time got on, the mints got better. You get the big mint, yeah. a big mint ball. Golly. <laughs> right? You know, not just the average joint. Yeah. Man, that was Sunday morning. Get your black, get your black slacks on. Yeah. Is your black little tie going? Your white shirt press, short sleeve in the building. God had his real. Yeah, you, you had to get your fresh together. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I think I think now a lot of a lot of kids got away from that. Now they don't go to. They church. don't even go to church. Nah. And and when they do go to church, they don't get dressed. Nah. They don't get dressed. Like you go to regular church. I mean, they, it. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, there's a lot of us that still get dressed for church. Yeah. But there's it's it's much more widely, much more commonly that you come as you are because they just don't want to lose membership. Yeah. For people who socioeconomically don't have money, which I think is a really good philosophy. Yeah. But it's not about it's not about the church's philosophy, it's the people's philosophy. Yeah. We should want more to celebrate in a certain way. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? They lowered the standards. Yeah, and, and we went right with it. Yeah. They lowered the standards, which is okay. Yeah. That's good. So now it's up to I think each person to kind of have their own standard about that. But anyway, that's just a thought of mine. We we, we what are we talking about here? It's good to see you guys. We got a uh, stereo legend Vader. I appreciate you guys coming to hang out. Obama, uh, Shonda Lulu, it's good to have you. And then, ha, ha, listen, hi, it's good. It's good to see you out there. I, I, I love what's going on with the light. So we're uh, we're, we're chilling here on uh, on stereo. I wanted to uh, just jump on and wish you all a happy Mother's Day. Boy, oh boy, uh, what would we be without the stereo um, women and mothers? Uh, what would we be as period without mothers? Um, I know that, and I say it all the time. I know that everything that I am is because of my mother, you know, uh, my mother instilled in me belief in myself that has carried through my whole life and her love has been such a, the way that she's loved, I mean, she whooped my ass, don't get me twisted, but the way that she loved was a beacon of inspiration in a funny way. It made me want to make her proud. And when, when a mother gives love that's, that shows that she believes so much in the child's greatness, it makes the child believe. Mothers are the most powerful forces in the universe and they get a bad rap a lot of time because there's no perfect mother, right? 
we're all trying and sometimes you can swing the pendulum and try too hard and hover and becoming a mother that's smothering right because the best mother sometimes makes you know your kids failure a necessity and freud said that so a mother is a really tight rope to, to and, and oftentimes just like you know this is the job of parenting they're often taken for granted most of what they do is not seen most of the stress that they manage is that nobody says thanks for and so i guess i just wanted to make take a moment right now to say that we see you we need you we love you we're deeply thankful for you let me let me see if my mom will say will check off uh and say say good night to you guys ma i just want you to come and say goodbye to everybody for the uh yeah we, we, so this is a podcast where we're just saying goodbye to everybody thanks everybody for coming out uh so listen this is and i have my mother on here and i have my my cousin's wife we're going to say get say hi to her real quick but we're super proud i was just telling them that everything that i am is because of you Aww. and because of how you've loved me Aww. and inspired me to be a doctor ever since i was a little little kid i did tell you what you said i was oh, so i didn't even think i had another choice he did it. He like did. i didn't think i, I could be like anything else and, and i want to say one thing having my son and my daughter have been but wait the most just say wonderful your son. just say your my son, son yeah, you and my that. daughter no, you don't think you leave that part out they are mo the most wonderful thing that's ever happened to me okay. in my life. They're my everything. But can we tell everybody for and real who's your favorite? And to all the mothers, Ma, can we just happy say this Mother's part? Day. Before we get back to that, because we want to get back to that, can <laughs> you say who's your favorite? Can, you, can we just say, in, in front of public, in, in, in the public, in my show, can you just tell me who your favorite? I love both my children are different, but I love them both the same. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Your <laughs> sister's not a doctor. I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to put that out there. All right. So I want to say, hey, so happy Mother's Day. Do you want to say anything to the mothers out there who are listening? Hello, everyone, and happy Mother's Day to you. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your family, your children. It's a gift from God. So yes, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. All right, these are these little guys here. My nephew's out here hanging out. So I want to thank you guys so much for hanging in and tuning in with us. Enjoy your Mother's Day. Rest, relax. Uh, give yourself uh, the love that you deserve and, and, and take in and soak in all the love from your family. Until next time, folks. Peace. This is Dr. Pete. You've been tripping with Dr. Pete. For the full show, please listen to us live on stereo, or you can listen to playbacks on YouTube, Anchor, and Spotify. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, huh? Peace.